Hey guys, so I've been taking a look at Linux Mint 18.2 Cinnamon Edition over the past few days. I've been running it on my Tritian laptop, uh, so it's had a decent show on bare metal hardware. And uh, today I'm going to talk about some of the thoughts I had surrounding it. Now, now I've started testing distributions on bare metal, I suspect that future reviews are likely to be a little less structured. Usually when I uh, spin up a distribution in a virtual machine, uh, I'll have like a checklist of things that I'll try out and test and what have you. But what I'm actually doing with the uh, laptop here is I'm actually using uh, these distributions that I'm testing as a as a partial daily driver, like any sort of easy tasks I can offset to it, I'll, I'll, I'll do so just so that I get a feel for the operating system and the laptop itself. First off the bat, by the way, just as a bit of a tangent, the Tritian laptop itself available from Android Introware.com, not a sponsor, but is actually a really good laptop. It's just like the build quality, very nice. Hardware all works perfectly. There's lots of little touches about it that just make it a pleasure to work with. The um, the mouse tracker pad is, is positioned nicely. The power button is uh, nice and away from the keyboard so you don't accidentally press it when you're going for like a page up or a page down or whatever. Uh, it comes with the numpad as well, so if you like the, the numpad on your keyboard, that's good. And just generally across the board, for an entry-level laptop, the build quality is superb. I paid about, overall I paid about £400 for it in that ballpark, but... Um, that included, I think, some warranty bits and pieces and maybe a spare adapter. It comes with, I believe, HDMI and VGA. I say, I believe, I'm, I'm staring at it now. So, uh, yeah, like, and it comes with a decent number of ports, decent number of USB ports. Uh, it comes with, I think that's an SD card reader on the bottom there, but I've not tried it out. Um, and it doesn't come with too many, like, buttons and bells and whistles and things like that. It comes with the function key and, and the standard laptop desktop. But um, it's basically a simple, straightforward, entry-level laptop that's, great build quality and has everything that you need out of it. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a good Linux laptop and you're in the UK, Entraware, I don't know if they ship abroad or what have you, but um, just on the is it two distributions now that I've reviewed off of it, good piece of kit, good piece of kit. So um, I, I like this, you know, this is a good purchase. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Uh, so uh, Linux Mint 18.2. Now, I can give you a bit of a summary already. This is based on the long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is 16.04. Um, and it really, for all intents and purposes, when it comes to day-to-day -day usage, is just 16.04 with the Cinnamon desktop. Now, the Cinnamon desktop is really nice, actually. Um, I have... I Yeah, it's really nice. If you are a fan of more traditional desktop paradigms, but you, you want a bit of shine, or want a bit of polish, you want something that can possibly compete in a more pound-for-pound -pound fight with Windows, Cinnamon's really good. I like Cinnamon. It does have a um, decent amount of customization options, but really, um, Cinnamon kind of is geared towards just being a Windows uh, shell kind of, not, not necessarily a replacement, but inspired by, so that people coming across from Windows will be a bit more at home. And uh, and it does. It looks it looks polished. It looks professional. I haven't had any bugs with it, uh, even though uh, this is the beta version of um, of Linux Mint. So, um, but I don't mind when it comes to beta versions of Linux Mint because they're based on an LTS version of Ubuntu. Uh, unless they are trialing out a particularly experimental version of Cinnamon or what have you, there's really very little that can go wrong. So uh, don't be too sheepish about trying out a, a Linux Mint beta. Obviously, don't put it on mission critical hardware or anything like that. But I have yet to come. I have yet to find a bug that's Linux Mint specific. However, however. I have come across a fair number of bugs in this distribution, and they all come from the Ubuntu 16.04 release. Uh, the thing is, um, so the Ubuntu 16.04 release was not really a very good release, especially when you compare it to the two releases since then. There, have, you know, there have been problems with network. There, there have been a lot of problems with like local networking on the on the latest LTS of, of Ubuntu, and I found I've actually experienced that having this laptop on on the network as well. Um, and when it comes to the Mate version of Linux Mint, you've really got to ask yourself, do you want newer versions? Like the, the, dif the difference between Ubuntu Mate and Linux Mint Cinnamon, the Mate edition, you know, there's obviously some differences with software choices, although there's, you know, like what one can do, the other can do pretty much as easily. Um, and there is a little bit of like, yeah, you, you, you might want to move the, the menus around a bit. But when I started Linux for the, for the first time as a daily driver, so that was, you know, when I first had it as a big 
primary desktop driver. Um, and I used Fedora with GNOME 2, which had basically the same layout as Ubuntu Mate. I had zero problems getting used to it. It was a very intuitive desktop to get to used to, to get used to. So when it comes to um, Ubuntu Mate and Linux Mint, um, I, uh, and, and when it comes to desktop applications, I, 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 that, that extra six that six month release is really good actually because a lot of problems you know will creep into the Ubuntu repositories that have little bugs in over time. And if you're on an LTS version of Ubuntu, you have to put up with that bug or you have to fix it, deal with it, find a workaround, or just live with it until another LTS comes along. Whereas with the six monthly release, that's a lot quicker. And of course, with rolling releases like Arch and and um, tumbleweed and Debian testing and what have you, um, there is an even quicker time usually to when programs are updated and therefore bugs tend to, you know, you tend to, when you find a bug, it tends to get fixed quicker, basically. I'm not going to say there's more or fewer. Um, I'm just going to, you know, it's just this, the, whenever you do experience a bug, you're likely to experience it for a shorter period of time, providing you can't fix it on a rolling release than with a scheduled one. So, um, so with Linux Mint, they were clearly aiming to go for like a strong and st oh god, not those words. They were clearly trying to go for a you know rock solid distribution based on a um, an LTS version of Ubuntu. And I think if I'm gonna, you know I think Ubuntu kind of in a way let them down here, but Ubuntu managed to dig themselves out of that hole because if you're running a desktop, I you know I would I would absolutely go with the six monthly release version of Ubuntu Mate. That's a fantastic uh, distribution. But if you want another desktop environment, go for it. And um, uh, but when it comes to Cinnamon, well, you know, it's it's looking at what who this di distribution is for because, you know, in terms of my day to day, my use, you know, like I'm using, um, for example, I'm using Firefox here, and I've just installed Simple Screen Recorder just so I can do this um, uh, this review here, which actually didn't come in the uh, LTS repositories, which is now in the repositories of newer. Uh, Ubuntu distributions again, so I wouldn't have had to have, have actually installed this for, through a third-party PPA uh, if I didn't need um, if it was a newer version of Ubuntu because that's already in there. By the way, uh, Simple Screen Recorder, really great piece of software. It's what I do a lot. It's what I use uh, a lot in a lot of cases for recording my screencasts here, uh, particularly for the, on the laptop because it's it's nice and low on system resources. So for a nice entry-level laptop, I can record. Also, it doesn't use too many system resources, so the fan on the laptop isn't buzzing out because if you do a lot, if you know, if you obviously on laptops, if you do a lot of resource-intensive stuff, the fan is going to start working overdrive, and that's going to have an impact on the audio of the videos. So, yeah, simple screen recorder. If you're looking for a great, it's in the repositories of all of the Arch-based distributions, and I believe Arch itself, and in the newer versions of Ubuntu, but not the latest LTS. Like I say, like all in all, we can have a look at the software choices. It's pretty good software choices. If you notice that KeyPass X there is um, something I installed. Um, what have we got here? We've got GIMP. Uh, we've got Firefox transmission. LibreOffice. Uh, I installed MPV because the X apps, the X app media player here, um, didn't play all the types of yeah. This is X player. So this is part of the X apps that are being developed by the Linux Mint team uh, to replace apps that do the same job. Um, yeah, I I gotta say like so. What they're trying to do here is they're trying to develop a bunch of apps that are Linux Mint specific and they work across Cinnamon, Mate and XFCE which basically kind of narrows the differences between those desktop environments anyway um, and they do replace like software things like Pluma and Kaja and Nemo and these are all applica- oh actually Nemo is just part of Cinnamon but uh, a lot of these uh, X apps you know there are other there are apps that are part of like Mate or or um, GNOME or what have you that just do the job better or as well without you know without the need of work and um, even though you know it was as simple as installing MPV for a secondary media player or even using the VLC um, for a you know for for a, for a distribution and desktop environment that want to be like super slick uh, and super professional and super rock solid stable that was a little bit worrying um, not worrying you know it's a little bit like oh okay. Um, because uh yeah it's just sort of like that that bug needn't have arisen if if there was if you know if there was um if if totem had been used for example or if, if, uh, mpv but other than that software choices are generally pretty good with linux mint they try uh from the looks of it things like they try and go for things like vlc and libreoffice 
and Firefox, uh, GIMP. Uh, a lot. It, it it does seem that they somewhat gravitate towards software that is um, cross. Uh, that is also available on Windows, so that it makes it easier for Windows users to come across. Um, but other. Um, but yeah, like it's it is uh, really at the end of the day, it is just an Ubuntu LTS with Cinnamon, and it really depends on how much you like the Cinnamon desktop. If the Mate desktop set up in the same way is just as good, I've got to say I've got to recommend Ubuntu Mate over it. I've got to recommend Ubuntu Mate over it. It's just as easy, literally just as easy to install Codex. Uh, the software boutique on Ubuntu Mate is is superb. Um, I would even say better than the Linux Mint Software Center because um, the Ubuntu Mate Boutique gives you nice descriptions. It tells you the ins and outs of it. Uh, it gives you the nice, you know, install script that you can queue up. Um, you know exactly where you are with the with the Ubuntu Mate Software Center. Now the Linux Mint Software Center really good as well. I can bring it up. Um, I can bring it up here. Uh, It takes a while to load up. It's a good software center, but it does refer to the packages by their package name, which again can be a little bit confusing to newer users. But when I, you know, if I, you know, if I dr drag my memory back to when I started, it didn't take too long to sort of learn. Um, in terms of games, I think you can install Steam quite easily. Which can you? Yeah, there it is. Wow, that's quite far down the. Um thing but yeah you can install steam there which is good in fact if it were if it, to be honest if i was running linux mint i might even have put steam in um uh installed by default as a as, as, or, or uh you know St linux mint would be really would really benefit from the ubuntu mate software boutique <laughs> um but yeah i do i think linux mint try and develop a lot of their their applications in-house and i don't always think that's necessarily the best outcome although they did the cinnamon, you know, the cinnamon desktop is is um, is all part of that ecosystem, and the cinnamon desktop's really good. I can't fault it, but it's been around for a while now. It's been around for a while, um, and I think it was the answer to um, uh, the new GNOME three desktop paradigm. So, uh, and I think that the Ubuntu Mint team wanted something that was partly their own, but also you know, and partly to distinguish themselves from from the other. Uh, desktop environments but also something that they could control in terms of the UI because they wanted it to be Windows like um, also one thing that I really didn't like that I had to do about it is that in order to make sure that when I booted up the laptop right, I wanted to boot up the laptop with Bluetooth off I don't use Bluetooth so in my mind it's a drain on power it's a potential security hole and it's um, you know one thing that I just I just don't need uh, I actually had to go into the command line to turn it off to to stop Bluetooth starting up at uh, boot, which um, I thought was a really like mm, okay ooh um, okay didn't yeah I, I gotta say I wasn't wasn't particularly impressed with that one but um, uh, and yeah and and then other than that it was it was the same kind of issues with software that I deal with with um, long term support releases of Ubuntu so yeah. You know, I wish uh, it, it's perhaps not the most exciting of reviews, and I've reviewed Linux Mint distributions now for for a long, long, long time, and I do feel like I have been reviewing the same operating system. And to their credit, that is uh, continuity, and they've done a great job at being uh, the, the, uh, of of having a distribution that doesn't make drastic changes, that doesn't intimidate um, their existing user base by having you know those those odd choices. Um, the community is still kicking around. And the community, because it's not as big as the Ubuntu community, is maybe a little bit more flexible. Um, they have like social IRC channels as well, which can be pretty good. There's a lot going for Linux Mint, but but there are there is also a few ish. You know, there are just a few things that make me uneasy about it, like that Bluetooth error, like the issue, like the fact that third party PPAs are given a lower priority than the Linux Mint. Um, PPAs, I'm told, and that can cause a lot of, or that can cause a number of compatibility problems if you need third-party PPAs installed, uh, which I have had in the past as well because of just the priority order of the repositories. And also, there doesn't actually appear to be like that much documentation about Linux Mint. There's not like, um, I don't think there's a Linux Mint wiki, um, or if there is, it certainly passed me by. 
Uh, whereas, like, you've got a Manjaro wiki, you've got, uh, the, you know, the Arch wiki. So Manjaro, which which I see as maybe the Arch equivalent of Mint, does have really, really good documentation. And, yeah, you know, you, that it might drop you into the command line, but with Manjaro, you sort of expect that a little bit more than with Mint. With Mint, you know, I'd really want to be in the command line as little as possible, which does sort of beg the question why the default setup has a, a terminal there. You know, in, if it's in, if it's a distribution designed for for Windows converts, you might not necessarily want the terminal as prominent as it is. Although, admittedly, I've personally found it useful, and I'm sure many other people would. But um, uh, yeah, it does it does seem like um, that the, that that doesn't necessarily line up perfectly. Um, but it's also kind of problematic that a lot of the best documentation for it is is under the is is, is labelled as Ubuntu documentation because of course it's of, of the distribution that it's based off of. So there's not like there's a grand you know Linux Mint wiki or anything like that that um, that you know bolsters support for the software. A lot of it's done in the forums. A lot of it's done on the IRC channel, and and that's very sort of an ad hoc way of doing it, which relies a lot on a vibrant community. Again, you could say the same thing for well, you obviously can say the same thing for the wiki, but I think Linux Mint would benefit greatly from a from a, from a, from an arch manjaro or arch or manjaro style wiki. Um because it does seem that the documentation is a little bit lacking and then you again go back to the Ubuntu documentation and the support in in in, in Ubuntu forums and that's where you know I I found any any issues I I've had with this, minor issues. Um I've looked, you know, I've I've always always every single time been directed to either Ubuntu documentation or the Arch wiki or some you know or or, or a non distro specific one but usually by far Ubuntu. So Linux Mint's great if if you're like a low power user if you if you're coming from Windows you want something that doesn't get viruses you only use the internet browser you only use you know the the LibreOffice uh, then it's fine. Then it's then it's absolutely fine. Um, you know, it's it's the it's the distribution that you might want to install on your mum's laptop or what have you. Yeah, that's that's great. But um, for anything beyond that, I don't know if it's really got legs because uh, a lot of the software is just uh, with a long term support release and distributions that base themselves on long term support releases. Uh, towards the end of that software starts looking really quite ropey and you've got this cycle of software that starts off being new and exciting and then over the course of two years just gets a bit ropier and ropier you know and and, and you start seeing other distributions and other users with newer versions of software and there's you just with a two-year-old piece of software of uh, you know where they're they're far ahead and again if you are a low power user if you are if you are someone that doesn't mind or someone that despises change at every turn then yeah linux mint and the continuity behind that will probably benefit you. Uh, another thing I do like about Linux Mint is the control panel um, and the customization features. Things like backgrounds, effects, fonts, themes, all this kind of stuff. First of all, it gives you a decent selection out of the box. And look how easy that is to customize the even the sort of the, the ins and outs of the operating system. It comes with a few new themes. It comes with Mint X and uh, it comes with Mint Y which is a a flat theme very similar to arc but i got to say i like this gray bird theme especially how it looks in cinnamon for some reason i think cinnamon seems to add this extra layer of polish uh maybe it's the anti aliasing or compositing or something but i find that it looks really nice but you can you can switch up the theme and it's a, a real nice like the control panel is just beautiful from top to bottom startup applications what do we got in startup probably need a get away with turning a few of these things off just to save I don't use that don't use that there you go so I gotta say mixed on this mixed on this and it's not a drastically different Linux Mint distribution to the ones I've previously um, installed as well I think part of I think most of the issues I've had with it are as a result of the Ubuntu base that it's based on and if I was, you know, in charge of the um, Linux Mint project, there'd be a good chance that I'd want to shift over to basing it entirely on Debian testing, only going with one desktop environment and streamlining in that way. I'm not entirely sure why they have Mate and Cinnamon at this point. Cinnamon, I think, is now um, grown up enough that it can be the flagship distribution. Um, and then you could just let the community support the rest. Uh, and I've always been, I, well, not I haven't always been an advocate of this, but I've recently been an advocate of Linux distributions getting behind one desktop environment, uh, or at the very most two. Um, 
that way they can focus on it, they can streamline it, new users don't necessarily get confused, um, and advanced users can install what they want on top of it or go to a community-based distribution. I also like how, um, how Ubuntu have done it as well. I think that's a, a particularly good way. But anyway, regardless, this has been something of a rambly review, and I do apologize for those of you that like something a little bit more succinct. But uh, like I say, I've been um, meandering around this distribution now for a few days, Broadly speaking, really quite like it, apart from the frustrations of um, older software. Well, it's not even older software. It's software from the Ubuntu LTS. So a lot of the gripes I have with, uh, well, some of the gripes I have with the software on this are, are gripes of, of, of Ubuntu. But um, in terms of what it offers that the Ubuntu spin-offs don't, is not really that much, unfortunately. You know, and, uh, there was a time when when Mint used to be much more of a stride forward, when other uh, desktop environments and other distributions didn't have, you know, weren't as user friendly. But now most distributions, I feel, could either be set up quite easily for a newbie, or a newbie could even set it up. In a lot of cases, um, I think Mint might need to, you know, I don't know, I, you know, the. Is Mint a distribution that I'd now reach for? And it's probably not. I would probably go for an Ubuntu variant, especially if I wanted newer software. So I think that's about it for this review today. Um, spin it up yourselves and see if, if, if you like the look of it. Um, like I say, I like the Cinnamon desktop, but is it enough for me to to, uh, to pick up uh, Linux Mint? And the, the answer is probably not. But it probably might be in the event of certain uh, converts from Windows. So that's about it for this particularly rambly review. I've done very rambly Linux Mint uh, videos before. And I haven't actually, I'm afraid I haven't really showed you that much on screen either. Um, there are like there are some things um, in Cinnamon that are really quite nice. But Cinnamon, there's not actually that much to it. That's one of the reasons I like it. It's, it's a menu. It manages Windows. Um, nice little panel menu there is some customization options but generally speaking you you know it, it's like where the panel is is it top bottom left right uh do you how many you know notification icons clock or it's very basic kind of customization but um but because there's not some it doesn't try and do too much it is a uh, uh, not you know, it is a small. It doesn't have too many features in terms of a desktop environment, and that works to its credit because it's less to get lost in. So you know, again, one one more for newer users. Um, thank you very much for watching. That's about it for me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.